Why hello there. Sorry if it's been a while. But we'll make this schedule straight. We'll do DMV lessons on the day's Tailsland works. How does that sound? Good. Anyways, tell me your names. Then we'll get started. My name is Yuhira Sarwa. My name is Ritsu Tanaka. My name is Azusa Naikano. My name is Mia Akiyama. And my name is Tsumugi Kotobuki, but you can call me Mugi for short. Good. It's an all-girls, no-boys, DMV lesson. Let's get started with purchasing, selling, and registering vehicles. Now girls, this is important since you've all transferred from Japan. Here is how to purchase, sell, and register your vehicle with a DMV. When you purchase a vehicle from a licensed dealer or purchase and trade your old vehicle with a licensed dealer, the dealer supposed to do all of the necessary DMV paperwork. Make sure that the dealer is licensed by the DMV and they are completing all of the necessary DMV paperwork for the transaction. When you purchase a vehicle from a private seller, at the minimum, you need to inspect the vehicle to ensure that the vehicle is safe to drive, obtain the smog certificate from the seller, if required by the DMV, and make sure that the seller has the certificate of title with his or her name on it. You then need to visit the DMV office or an authorized DMV service center to submit the paperwork and transfer the ownership of a vehicle. If you are going to visit a DMV office, you may want to set an appointment in advance to reduce your waiting time. You can set an appointment using Tailslandian River Regional DMV Appointment System on its website, or by calling 1-800-695-6352. Authorized DMV service centers are companies or organizations that are authorized by the DMV to do some of its paperwork and submit it to the DMV. For example, if you are a member of AAA, you can walk into your local AAA branch and they will help you with the DMV vehicle transfer and registration paperwork. The following paperwork is needed when you visit a DMV office for transferring a vehicle's title. Girls, pay attention as you have just transferred from Japan. If you are looking forward to getting an American license, please listen closely and not talk. Step 1, DMV Certificate of Title, which is a pink slip, that is signed by the seller for passing the vehicle ownership to the buyer. Tip. If the vehicle has a loan on it, line 2 of the title needs to be signed by the loan company that financed the vehicle. The title also has a space to be filled in with the odometer reading for the vehicle. Step 2. If the title is lost, an application for duplicate or paper list title, which is registration number 227, needs to be filled out, signed and submitted to DMV. Step 3. If the seller's name does not appear on the title as the owner, but he or she claims that the vehicle was purchased from the previous owner. Then the seller needs to show you a bill of sale that shows the previous owner transferred the vehicle ownership to the new owner. And step 5, a smog certificate is required for the transfer of the ownership of a vehicle unless 1. The transfer occurs between a spouse, domestic partner, sibling, child, parent, grandparent, or grandchild. 2. A biennial smog certification was submitted to DMV within 90 days prior to the vehicle transfer date. Note, a vehicle inspection report may be required for proof of certification. And 3. The vehicle is 4 years old or newer. Who issues a vehicle's license plate? We'll discuss that now. The DMV issues your vehicle's license plates, which must be visible and readable at all times, and should be fastened securely to your car. Your rear license plate must be between 12 and 60 inches from the ground. Your front license plate should be no higher than 60 inches from the ground. How to renew your registration? We'll find out now. You need to renew your vehicle's registration every year. The DMV will send you a vehicle registration renewal notice prior to your vehicle's registration expiration date with the following. 1. Your vehicle information 2. Your license plate tags expiration date 3. Registration Renewal Fees 4, Late Renewal Penalty Fee Information and 5, Parking Ticket Late Fees, if you have any. Whether the smog check is required and you are required to take your vehicle to a smog test only center or any smog inspection center. If the DMV does not have your vehicle insurance information on file, they will require you to mail your insurance card or stop by the DMV office to drop off your insurance card. You can renew your registration using any of the following methods. 1. 
DMV's online registration, http, colon slash slash, www.dmv.trr.gov, click on online services then registration renewal, and follow the instructions. 2. DMV's phone registration, call 800-658-7754 and follow the instructions. 3. By mail, follow the instructions on your vehicle registration renewal form. And 4. In person, visit any DMV office. You can set up an appointment with a DMV for a shorter waiting time at the DMV's office. You can schedule an appointment using the DMV's online appointment for vehicle registration or call 800-658-7754 to set up an appointment. Finally, you can visit a DMV service center such as AAA if you are a member. When you receive the registration stickers from the DMV, attach them to your license plates. Keep your registration in the car at all times. Next, we have vehicle insurance requirements. Sorry if the video maker is very glitchy. According to the Tailslandian River Region's Compulsive Refinancial Responsibility Law, all vehicles that are operated or parked on Tailslandian River Regional Roadways must carry financial responsibility, commonly known as insurance. This law has been enacted so if you make a mistake, which we all may do at some point, and hit another driver or pedestrian, insurance coverage is available to pay for the injury and damage to the other person or vehicle. Below are the different types of acceptable financial responsibilities for a vehicle. You are only required to have one of the below financial responsibility types. Option 1. A motor vehicle liability insurance policy, most common option. Option 2. A $35,000 deposit with a DMV. Option 3. DMV issued self-insurance certificate. Option 4. Shorty bond for $35,000 from a company licensed to do business in the Tailslandian River region. Needless to say, the most common financial responsibility option is carrying liability insurance. In the Tailslandian River region, you are required to have the following minimum liability insurance coverage. Death or bodily injury coverage of $15,000 per person per accident. Death or bodily injury coverage of $30,000 to more than one person maximum per accident. And property damage, $5,000 maximum per accident. What does liability car insurance cover? Here you go. Based on the above liability insurance, if you are involved in an accident and it is determined to be your fault, the above minimum liability insurance will pay for the bodily injury and damages to the other party in the accident. In this situation, the above liability insurance does not pay for your injuries or damages. If you need insurance that also pays for your bodily injury and damages, you need to get a type of insurance that is called comprehensive and collision insurance, which is not part of the requirement of the TR region's financial responsibility. Comprehensive and collision insurance are much more expensive than liability insurance. Also, it is important to note that if you are ever involved in a serious accident that is determined to be your fault, especially with a pedestrian or a fast-moving vehicle, the injury and damages can be substantially above the minimum Tailslandian River regional requirements. In many cases, the cost of injury, death and long-term pain and suffering and attorney's fees can even run into the millions. The insurance is only going to cover the above minimum coverage in you, if you are over 18, or your parents are guardian if you are under 18, are going to be liable for this hefty cost. Thus, it is really important for you to be careful and follow all traffic laws to avoid such a situation. Traffic laws are written so our roadways are safer for everyone. Finally, it is important to know that when a vehicle owner gives someone else permission to drive his or her vehicle, the owner is liable for any damage caused by that driver. The person who signs a minor's license application becomes liable for any damages that minor causes no matter whose vehicle they drive, until they turn 18. Do I need to carry evidence of auto insurance? You girls need to ask me these questions and I'll answer them. Based on the Tailslandian River Regional Law, you must carry evidence of financial responsibility in your vehicle at all times. You must have the proof of insurance in the following situations. 1. If you are pulled over by an officer and asked to show evidence of insurance. 2. When you are renewing your vehicle's registration. And 3. If you are involved in a traffic accident, you must show the evidence of insurance to the police officer or the other party to the accident. Why is my insurance very expensive? As a new driver with little driving experience, 
you are at a higher risk of being involved in an accident. Also, statistics shows that teenage and young drivers tend to encompass more of the risk takers and unsafe drivers. What is the Tales Londian River Region's low-cost auto insurance program? This program was started in 1999 to help drivers who cannot afford auto insurance and can meet a certain income eligibility to get an affordable auto insurance. To get additional information on TRRLCA, visit www.mylocustauto.com or call 1-866-602-8861. What happens if I get into an accident without insurance? If you are involved in a collision without insurance or if your insurance does not meet the minimum coverage requirement by the Taleslandian River region, your license will be suspended for four years, and I am not joking whatsoever. During the last three years of your license suspension, if you obtain a Taleslandian River Region Insurance Proof Certificate, Regional Registration Number 22, and maintain it, your license may be returned. Court personnel and law enforcement officials can tell if your vehicle is insured by checking DMV records. Insurance companies are required by law to report private vehicles insurance status to the DMV. What happens if I cancel my auto insurance? If you cancel your auto insurance or let it lapse, your vehicle's registration will be cancelled. Here are the situations in which your vehicle's registration can be suspended. 1. Liability insurance is cancelled or you let it lapse. 2. The insurance company does not electronically provide evidence of insurance to the DMV. 3. You provide false insurance information to the DMV. And 4. You purchase and register a new vehicle without obtaining liability insurance. And that's all there is to it. All girls can go back to your studio house. I'll see you when you have your performance. But remember, it must be virtually and posted on Facebook, or else we'll all end up in NASA's end of the world locker. Class dismissed. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Hit that bell to stay up to date on the latest videos you might want to see, otherwise, you'll miss them.